for joining us for another episode of HeartStrong Faith TV. I'm your host, Rebecca Carroll, and this is my dear, dear <laughs> friend and HeartStrong Faith Ministry partner, Debbie Stewart. Debbie spoke at last year's conference, of course. And Debbie, before we get going, if it's okay with you, I, I, I need to call attention to my sweater. Yes, that does need explanation. It Rebecca, needs an explanation <laughs> because when my computer is open, all you can see is, is my pom-pom. <laughs> I am wearing a flashy Christmas sweater. Because it's that time of year, and I'm that kind of girl. Hold your applause, people. Hold so. your applause. <laughs> Hold your applause. So I, I ask Debbie, and let's mm. let's tell um, our friends a little bit about you in case they don't know. You are the director of yes. ministry initiatives for. Hope for the Heart. Yes, work with June Hunt, all things ministry related. So we love to do prison ministry there. We do a lot of teaching, training. We do Bible studies there. We we do the best we can to equip the saints for the work of ministry. And really part of our mission is to end hopelessness one life at a time. We have a huge international footprint, 66 countries. Uh, resources are in, in now 33 languages. The Lord just gave us another language just this last year. So love what we do there at Hope for the Heart and how it's connected to to ministering into women and the lives of women and what KCBI and First Baptist Dallas does. Well. It is. And uh, conference, hope, yes, all of them. And Hope for the Heart was on site with us last year um, as a as a ministry partner. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have had a very long relationship here at KCBI with June Hunt and her programs, Hope for the Heart and Hope in the Night, yes, which right. is still part of KCBI programming, I believe. It is. I believe. Yes. And so it's just, it is a, a treat for us to have Debbie as a part of the conference. And you're not a part of the conference because Debbie was one of one of uh, two other women that I went to initially with this big, crazy idea. What was it, two or three years ago? Probably so, yes. Yeah. But it really fed into something that the Lord gave me almost 12 years ago, which I shared brief briefly with you, but not knowing how it would come out. So I was a little hesitant. But about 12 years ago, I really began to pray something instructed by the Lord for a spiritual awakening among women. I want to be a part of a movement of God in the lives of women, a spiritual movement, a spiritual awakening. So many things are happening in not only the lives of our women, but families and the breakdown of families. I think the enemy has escalated the breakdown of families. And with us being the heart of that, I've just have been so burdened by the Lord just doing a great work in the lives of women, in their minds, in their hearts, that we would hear him and know him. And I know you share that passion as well. I, I do. Mm -hmm. It is my heart's desire and my heart cry that women would know Christ. Mm -hmm. And Debbie, I, Debbie and I were talking off camera a little bit before we started. But uh, this morning on Mornings with Jeff and Rebecca, we were talking about the Heart Strong Conference. Mm -hmm. And I was saying one of the reasons why it's so important to me that you get to know Christ through his word is because that was my answer. That's what fixed me. And you may know part of my history if you've listened to KCBI for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I spoke about it at the conference mm -hmm. last year, Debbie. Mm -hmm. But uh, alcoholism, I'm a, a eight years sober now and 17 years spent in bulimia. And it wasn't until I made a decision to spend, and Debbie, you've talked about this before, mm -hmm. 20 minutes a day, every single day with the Lord in, in my Bible and in my journal. And pretty soon, 20 minutes turned into 30, which turned into 45. And then I couldn't wait to get my two babies down mm -hmm. for a nap so that I could have two and a half, three hours with the Lord. Because here's the thing. I didn't need a program. I didn't need an answer. Mm -hmm. I needed a savior, mm -hmm. a personal one who's going to get in the muck with me. That's right. Who's going to who's going to meet me where I am and love me as I was, but love me too much to let me stay there. And I believe he's awaiting that decision point in the lives of women everywhere. And he he awaited that in mind. But the difference between our stories is is almost completely opposite. <clears throat> in a way, Rebecca, you were living by the consequences of choices that you made yes. along the way. Yes. And I, growing up, was just a little bit different. I was, you know, the teacher's pet, little goody two-shoes. Now, both my brothers on both sides 
uh, gave my parents, you know, H-E double hockey sticks. I mean, it was just <laughs> craziness, dysfunction in our family like crazy. And because I was trying to be a harmonizer and I was trying to not do anything wrong because there was so much wrong going on, not only in my immediate family, but even in my extended family. Girl, we had 14 shades of crazy going on in our whole household. <laughs> it was nuts. So I, I was just the quiet and the, the, the compliant one. And so the truth is, I begin to live by the choices and the consequences of, of other people's choices. Right. And then that leads right into our son, who chose, through a series of, of pretty significant tragic circumstances, led him in a downhill spiral. Our son, Jared, I um, mean, if you know our story, he's incarcerated. And so through those years of prodigal living and now being incarcerated, we, we again had to learn to live with the choices that other people were making along those lines so whether it be be a story like that or a journey like ours either way we're always making coming to places of decisions and I think that might be what the Lord is waiting on us to do and you know that is my challenge 20 minutes a day for the rest of your life uh, no excuses no conditions no reservations no negotiations if you just keep showing up every day um, my word this year is resilient. I'm praying for my 2018 word do you have your word yet I do okay I want you to share that in a second. I will share it I don't have mine. And here's what the Lord keeps saying about it. Not yet. Not, not right now. Not okay. right now. So at some point, I think it's connected to some other things. But resilient was this year. And the funny thing is, uh, Rebecca, we had something happen oh, a couple of weeks ago. And I had ordered some makeup online. And it came in the mail with a free gift. <clears throat> and you can see this. It's Estee Lauder. And it's a little bitty uh, free package. And it's called Resilient Lift. No joke. <laughs> no joke. Resilience lift from Estee Lauder. It was the Lord yeah. at the end of this year just giving me a, real, a little resilient lift um, mm. through some difficult times. But the, the definition of that is strong enough to come back after severe bending, stretching, and other adversity. Semicolon, irrepressible. What if we lived a life? What if we made the decision to live a life that was irrepressible? Like we are unable to be held back and kept down. Yeah. What if the enemy could not get any success in our life? What is he going to do with a woman that just keeps showing up, just right. keeps coming back? Right. And I think this is the comeback year for a lot of women, that the consequences, the choices they've made, the yeah. consequences that they've lived by, this is your comeback year. And heart strong faith is going to help you to do that. I can sense the stirring of the Lord. Yeah. I'm feeling it now, even this morning, my verse from the Lord uh, which is in a weird place, Hosea 6, 3, that says, I want my people to know me, and I want them to know I will respond to them when they respond to me, that we listen and obey. And that is such a common theme throughout Scripture, too. And when you look at that word, because it's in Jeremiah 24, 7, yes, maybe, yes. I will give my people a heart to, to know, know me. me. And that word, know, is yada in the Hebrew. Mm -hmm. And what that means, it's a very... It's a no secrets kind of knowing. It is a, a complete intimacy. Yes. For example, in Genesis 4, 1, it says Adam knew Eve and, you know, then comes Cain in a baby mm -hmm. carriage. And <laughs> yeah. so it is just the, the most transparent, intimate, authentic kind of knowing. And that's not God saying, I want to know you that way. That's God saying, I want you to know me that way. Why? Because we don't need an answer. Mm -hmm. We need a savior. And so that's, that, that is it. That is why we put on the Heart Strong Faith Women's Conference. It is. And we're in a new place in society even. I did a, was preparing and did a Bible study at Hope for the Heart on Depression. And so I did a lot of research, clinical research and and other things, statistical research. I wanted to know about uh, more about depression. It's a, there's a spiritual side, there's a physical side, there's a medical side, perhaps as well, and all of that. And in my study, I think I've mentioned this to you, is when I learned that right now we, our society, is the most uh, indebted, uh, obese, mm. incarcerated, yeah. violent, uh, depressed, suicidal uh, society that's ever walked the face of this earth, and and we have more parents killing their children than anybody that's mm. ever lived we have more children killing their parents do you know that there's more there's more family and domestic violence during this christmas season than any other time of the year the most wonderful time of the year what do we have we have kids killing their parents parents killing their kids domestic violence family violence at what is supposed to be the happiest time of the year what happened what all of that happened on our watch right I think right. we have some significant responsibility to stand in, just like uh, the Bible says in Psalm 
106.30, I think, about Phinehas, that the plague, the, a plague because Israel had rebelled, but the, a plague, God had sent a plague because of their rebellion and because mm. of the choices that they had made. And the Bible says of Phinehas that he had the courage to step in and the plague was stopped. And I want to be that person. I yeah. want to have the spirit of Phinehas that will step in and pray or do whatever is needed so that this plague on our society and on our generation and the next generation, my ki- my kids, my grandkids. Yeah, I've got a 10 and 11-year-old. So and so I, I am swimming in these waters. Mm-hmm. They, uh, You know, my 11-year-old has a friend who said he thinks he's gay and, and you know, uh, kids don't know if they're boys or girls anymore. Mm-hmm. We, mm-hmm. we really do live in a very confused mm-hmm. time. And God is not the author of confusion. Right. God is not the author from. of chaos. He is a God of order. Mm-hmm. He is a God of stability, of peace. Mm-hmm. I, and so I, I just, if mm. I could reach through the camera, mm-hmm. and We've if we could about get that, you, our love for you, if we could get you, first of all, we'd bear hug you. Yeah. <laughs> we would neck hug you. Double you'd, portion. You'd need a neck guard. <laughs> but I, I really think uh, I know one of the most important things that you could do for yourself this year mm. is make the decision, like Debbie yes. has been saying, yes. just make a decision in your mind that you are going to come to the Heart Strong Faith Women's Conference. Let the Lord take it from there. Mm-hmm. Come without expectations. Mm-hmm. Come without reservations. But I, I believe that the Lord is beckoning you because he wants you to know him. Mm-hmm. And and we say this all the time. As, as women, we just want to know what the plan is. Yeah. And I've spent more time on my knees asking God, what do you want me to do? What is the plan? What's the plan? God's plan for your life is very, very simple, and it's that you would follow his son, but you won't follow someone you don't trust, and you can't Mm. trust someone you don't know, and you cannot know Christ apart from his word. And Psalm 37, 3 says, uh, trust the Lord and do good. I, I'm like you. I overanalyze. Oh, Lord, I'll do anything you want me to do. Just let me know. Just let me know. Just let me know. What does this mean and how is this connected? To, to which I really hear the Lord when I sit down with him in the morning to say, stop, child. Stop your craziness. I'm not going to tell you every single thing and how things are going to work out. I am going to require. I'm going to demand. If, if I think he does for me, uh, obviously he doesn't make us follow him but for me i believe he is saying i i I insist i insist that you calm down and that you trust me you're not going to know everything i'm not going to allow you to know everything but i'm well i will certainly allow you to know me and Mm, that's what i have got to get to stop trying to know everything and know how this fits and know what's going to happen and then know what i'm going to do uh, I got a book the other day. I got it from my grandson, Clark, who is three. And uh, it's by Lisa Turkhurst. And the name of it is uh, It Will Be Okay, Trusting God Through Fear and Change. And the first three, three times I sat down and read the book, and the first three times I cried all the way through it. Mm. And the Lord said, say, that this was not for Clark. This was for you. And one of the lines in that book is what was so significant that just grabbed my heart every time. It's when a seed was put into the ground, which was referred to the deep, dark, messy place. Raise your hand right now if you've been in the deep, dark, messy place. I mean, I think we all have. I've been there. I'm, I'm there, you know. And one of the things the seed said was, how can this be good for me? How can this be good for me? And the Lord knew it was good. He, he planned to grow him into a strong oak tree, but it required a process to get there. Heart strong faith will help you in the process. It will. It really will. And one of the things that we are going to do, uh, Debbie is one of the teachers. She's so good about this. And this is a passion of mine, too, that as we teach from the Bible, we will teach you how to study the Bible on your own so that you are not just walking away inspired. You can get inspired by looking at Pinterest. We're, We're not interested primarily in inspiring you. We are very much interested in equipping you so that you can have your own relationship with the Lord. I I think it's safe to say in a culture like ours today, coattail faith is not going to suffice. Mm -hmm. Um, Debbie's faith is mighty, but it does me no good when my day of trouble comes. I need my relationship with the Lord. I need, I need experience with Jesus that reminds me that who he was yesterday is who he is today, is who he is going to be tomorrow. And that comes simply through knowing him. And 
sweet friend, he is in pursuit of you. I, I'm so thankful he is he is pursuing yeah. me, and I sense that and feel that. I don't know exactly how the message is going to come out for me, and I'm hoping that the Lord allows me to do what he has been stirring in my heart. But I'll give you just a little just a little tidbit of it. If if this is where he, he where I think he's going, and if he doesn't make that change, it's about him being the giver. So many times we see in his word that he's the giver, and he's the giver of gifts, and he will give you courage, and he will give you strength, yeah. and all these things that he will give you. And we're like, yay, God, boo devil. You know, I'm getting all this from the Lord. <laughs> but do you know that he also, the Bible says, <clears throat> because it's the same word, when you use that word giver or gift, it's a it's a, a Greek a, a Greek word that means uh, dudame. Dudame is the Greek word that he gives you courage and that he gives you strength. But when the Bible says that he gave Paul a thorn in the flesh, it's the same word, mm. dudame. It was a gift. When it says that he allowed Peter, that he allowed Satan to sift him. So he, he gives permission for us to be sifted. He, he gives us a thorn in the flesh. There are things that he gives us that we certainly would not consider a gift. Right. But if you'll unpack it the way that he is giving this gift to you, you will see that it is indeed a gift. So sometimes we look, I, I like to say that word, uh, when the enemy, when things come in and, and the Bible says that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the, the Lord will set up a standard against him. And I, sometimes I think, oh, devil, what did you do to me? What, what did you do to me? You know, that's <laughs> how I remember that word. What, what are you doing to me? Right. Do to me means I, the Lord has given you a gift. But sometimes we give the enemy a gift. We give him place, Ephesians mm-hmm. 4, 7, uh, 427. Do not give the enemy a place. Okay, yeah. You know that same word, give the enemy a place? Same word, do to me. Don't give him a gift. How many times, even in this year, as we're preparing for Christmas in December, I'm ashamed to tell you, I have given the enemy some gifts. Already this month, mm-hmm. I have given him some gifts because I gave him a place. Right. Some of us already today, right? Well, a gift Speaking of gifts, give a gift to yourself. Yes. Uh, we, we. This is your, your invitation. Um, please do prayerfully consider coming to the Heart Strong Faith Women's Conference. It is a gift to yourself. It is the gift that is going to continue to give for the rest of your life for as long as you live. And details are at heartstrongfaith.com. Uh, Debbie is going to be there. We're so excited that Debbie's a part of it. Jill Briscoe is one of our speakers. Lisa Harper coming back yes. from last year. Yes. For some reason, they let me in, uh, so I'll be <laughs> teaching as well. <laughs> and girl, Liz, she's got something starting there that you need to hear. That is for sure. Well, thank you so much for joining yeah. us today. Don't you just love her? Don't you just Don't want to take her home love with her? You? We have a great time together. We want you to come have a great time with us.